You're watching This Week in Louisiana Politics with Fred Childers. Good Sunday morning to you. I'm Fred Childers. Thanks for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Politics on your local election headquarters. Well, Louisiana lawmakers voted to ask Governor John Bell Edwards to reject the Department of Health's proposal to require the COVID-19 vaccine for students 16 and older. Political reporter Shannon Hecht was at the Capitol for that meeting and brings us the details. In a packed hearing room, elected officials and concerned parents voiced their strong opposition to the COVID vaccine being added to the student schedule. Attorney General Jeff Landry suggested that the Department of Health does not have the authority to make such a rule and that they are going around the legislature. The legislative power of this state is vested with you all. The Louisiana Constitution provides for a separation of powers amongst three branches of government and provides that none of these shall exercise the power belonging to the other. The department defended the authority under the sanitary code and says that the process has been transparent. They also emphasize that parents can opt their kids out of the vaccine with a written dissent. Legislators brought up concerns in the rule that would allow schools to remove unvaccinated kids from class if there is an outbreak. The intent is not to exclude unvaccinated students from school. Several presenters brought up misinformation about the vaccine and legislators talked about how they don't trust the science and say it's been rushed. It's really extraordinary the amount of myths that are out there but what really does give me concern is that some families do fall victim to that and there can be real consequences to that. Legislators implored the governor to consider how they believe the rule is violating state statute. Well the Senate is expected to vote on this measure as well before it's sent to the governor. Governor Edwards says he will support the proposal unless anything in the law changes his mind. Senator Kennedy has also been pushing back against President Biden's vaccine mandate. Biden issued the mandate to bolster COVID-19 vaccination numbers. This week, the U.S. Senate voted in favor of blocking the rule through the Congressional Review Act, which allows Congress to overturn federal rules. Kennedy joined every other Republican in the Senate who voted for it. Here's what he told us right after that vote. We have a constitution and these decisions about balancing uh, uh, personal liberty and public uh, safety uh, were never intended by our founders to be made solely by the President of the United States. And this is the second setback for the effort after a federal court halted the mandate and testing requirements. The measure is still awaiting a vote in the House. Also at the state capitol this week, lawmakers to meet with Louisiana State Police over its history of excessive force and cover-ups. LSP hopes to put the new rules in place to govern troopers. Rachel Riley covered that meeting and has the details. Colonel Lamar Davis and other Louisiana State Police leaders met with legislators at the state capitol to commit themselves to change. Now this change ranges from policies to the agency's overall culture. And I've committed to doing the right thing for the right reason. A sea of blue uniforms take over the room for the first state police oversight meeting. Senator Franklin Foyle heads the committee. There have been some unfortunate events in the news, and so we felt as a legislative body we should use our oversight powers to review what the agency is doing. State Police Colonel Lamar Davis says they're looking to implement several changes, one being the use of force. We've banned chokeholds. Uh, that's something that uh, we've banned. We've also banned. Uh, ramming. He looks to break this behavior down further by addressing the psychological changes that must happen in the agency. Bringing in implicit bias training, that's something that helps educate our personnel with regards to their viewpoint towards our citizens. To prevent misconduct, avoid mistakes, which as we know can be deadly. Camera and internal investigation reform are also on the Colonel's agenda. That travel, not just whenever they arrive on scene will it be recorded, that travel to that event will also be recorded. We perform our duties, we can do so compassionately and that way we get the best outcome for all involved. As the new cadet class 100 starts their journey in December, Colonel Davis ensures that their training will positively reflect the changes they're looking to make in their organization. From the state capitol, Rachel Riley, NBC Local 33 News. 
A long-awaited rail project is finally getting the green light. Canadian Pacific Railway has struck a deal to connect Baton Rouge to New Orleans by railroad. The deal gives the company ownership of already existing tracks between the two cities. Now, the network would include stops throughout major points of both cities. It would be very easy and convenient to live in New Orleans and work in Baton Rouge or vice versa. I'm particularly excited about the fact that every class one railroad that operates anywhere in the United States of America will have access uh, to Louisiana uh, and to our port system. Now this merge is expected to be complete at the end of next year. Well, St. Tammany voters decided whether a new casino will be built. Lots of controversy surrounded it. Reporter LBJ has both sides of the argument. By now you've seen the commercials and if you've driven anywhere in St. Tammany Parish, you're certainly aware of the fight going on to build a new casino in Slidell. So we asked those in favor and against about what the other side isn't saying. Well, I think first and foremost, the misconception, the misinformation about the economic impact. This is an economic win for St. Tammany, Slidell, and the North Shore. It's a significant economic development project. Well, I think the crime issue was, is a big one. And they came out with all these statistics recently saying that crime will actually decrease with, uh, with the, uh, this casino being built here in, uh, in Slidell. When you look at all the FBI statistics, it's the opposite. The two sides also disagree on how they view the casino's worth in the city. Slidell is not a destination city. It never will be. Uh, I love it here. It's a residential community. This is a fully integrated resort style facility. What has also garnered a lot of attention is the promise from the Camellia Bay Resort owners to build a sports complex in addition to the casino in St. Tammany. They've agreed to do that. $35 million to build this high-end, fully state-of-the-art sports tourism complex right here in East St. Tammany. If this company fails, P2 fails, who's going to get stuck with those bills? Taxpayers. Um, so we are now looking at our own model for a sports complex. It's going to be self-funded, not funded through taxpayer dollars. That was LBJ reporting. The search for Southern University's new president chancellor continues. In July, Southern President Chancellor Ray Belton announced he would retire in the fall of 2022. He's held the role for the last seven years. Now the committee is meeting for the third time to narrow down semifinalists for his position. While the committee has compiled a pool of applicants to review, they still face one issue, the eventual publication of an applicant's name. That that's one of the, the, the awesome tasks of stepping up to public service, public government, is that transparency is a, is a key principle in, in what, the, what the activity is. Now, to review semifinalists, the committee broke off for an executive session to protect applicants' information, of course, and it was voted that interviews be rescheduled to a later date. The search committee is set to meet again in January. East Baton Rouge has once again set a record for the number of homicides in the parish. District Attorney Hiller Moore gave a deeper look into the crime rates and shared what is being done to deal with this issue. Jonah Gilmore reports. The number of uh, homicide deaths we have are troubling. The homicide rate in Baton Rouge will break yet another record. The number in January of murders that we had this year starting the year off and uh, it's really continued that that trend, unfortunately. According to the East Baton Rouge Coroner's Office, there have been 157 homicides as of December 6th. That's 29 more than what we saw this time last year. There's a lot of things and reasons why we believe that this is going on. District lack Attorney Hilla Moore says part of the issue is a lack of police manpower and resources. Maybe the crime is as it is, not enough police to uh, police the streets. People feel a little more brazen. You have noticed this year many more daytime shootings and daytime murders. Moore says the majority of murders happened in zip codes 70802, 805, and 806. 21 to 30 year old or your bulk victims is also going to be the same number for defendants. Moore says changes are coming to his office in hopes of keeping violent criminals off the streets. It's easier to say than done because it's a people. And it's justice. You have defendants and victims. 
uh, tough go, but uh, we just need to find a way. Jonah Gilmore, NBC Local 33 News. Louisiana's AG challenging the Biden administration again, this time over the state's carbon emissions. That's coming up right after the break. Stay with us. This is your local election headquarters. Welcome back. Louisiana's top attorney is challenging the federal government on what it calls the social cost of carbon. Attorney General Jeff Landry questions how that estimate is being used. Neil Zarang was inside the courtroom. That's why we're here today to keep the president in his sandbox. Attorney General Jeff Landry entered federal court Tuesday confident in their case. His legal team argued President Biden had overstepped his bounds through an executive order saying government agencies shall use preliminary costs per ton of carbon emissions to update their policies, processes, and practices. Judge James Kane worried about how that number could affect which permits are granted for, say, a lane added to a bridge, a new energy plant, or a farm. They were out there doing a study on the amount of methane that cattle released and they're going to attach a cost to that and then they're going to tax our beef or our meat or our poultry or whatever the activity is to, to limit our in intake of that. It's kind of voodoo economics. The Department of Justice represented the federal government in court and argued that similar formulas factoring in greenhouse gases have been used for decades. No agencies are being required to use these preliminary numbers in decision making, only considering the cost. Federal attorneys denied to comment on camera. He is trying to, to do a complete takeover of all of the industries in this country. And he's doing it by trying to assess the amount of carbon that each of those particular activities uh, have undertaken. New Orleans problematic water and sewer system is about to have fewer problems thanks to some federal dollars. The EPA announced $275 million will be paid to the city to help protect historically underserved communities from the impacts of storms and climate change. It's a loan from the Water Infrastructure and Innovation Act. U.S. Congressman Troy Carter from New Orleans says, quote, it is long past time that we invest in the safety, longevity, and resiliency of our water and sewage management systems. Millions of federal dollars are headed to Louisiana to help rebuild from hurricanes Ida, Delta, and Laura. Senator John Kennedy announced this week that Congress approved $78 million in FEMA grants for the state. Kennedy says Louisianans have suffered as a result of those destructive hurricanes over the last year and a half. The funding will be paid out to things like debris removal, school boards, and repairs to utility systems, just to name a few. NASA's leaders stopped by Stena Space Center last week to check out what they have been working on, which includes efforts to go to the moon and Mars. Kenny Lopez has the story. There's a lot that goes into launching into outer space, but before the astronauts can blast off, the countdown starts at Stennis Space Center. Engines like this are going to roar to life. NASA's Administrator Bill Nelson and Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy were on site checking out Stennis's out of this world operations. This is an exciting point in our nation's space history and a lot of it is happening right here. NASA is building the most powerful rocket in the world to power Artemis missions to the moon and eventual flights to Mars. The engines are being tested at Stennis. These engines support the rocket, which launches into space at 17,000 miles per hour in just 8.5 minutes. What is it like for you in this moment, being here, seeing the engines that launched you into space several times. I do feel this is a convergence for me of the past and the future, and it's really cool. This would be a part of an actual habitat. In addition to the rocket engines, NASA scientists are hard at work in the Autonomous Systems Lab, working on software and habitats which operate without any human intervention. We will continue to push the boundaries, and Stennis will stay right in the middle of it. Kenny Lopez. WGNO News. Wow, 1,700 miles per hour. Well, coming up, Congress, more specifically, Democrats have cleared the way to raise America's borrowing limit, also known as the debt ceiling. We'll have details on that effort next.
This is your local election headquarters. Welcome back. Well, the country may no longer be headed toward financial crisis. After months of pushback, Republicans voted on a plan to allow Democrats to raise the debt ceiling on their own. D.C.'s Raquel Martin reports. After months of back and forth between Democrats and Republicans, responsible governing won the day. Thursday, senators united to pass a plan to allow Democrats to raise the national debt ceiling and avoid a looming economic catastrophe come December 15th. The American people can breathe easy and rest assured there will not be a default. In the end, only about a dozen Senate Republicans helped Democrats get the bill through. It passed the House earlier this week and now heads to the president's desk. Once signed, it will allow Democrats to hold a second vote to officially increase the debt limit. This is about paying debt accumulated by both parties. But Republicans disagree. Joe Biden is the one who has spent it just frankly into oblivion. Missouri Republican Senator Josh Hawley and the vast majority of Republicans refused to support the effort. I did not support that agenda and I'm not going to help them pay for it. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, who brokered the fast track deal earlier this week, said the crisis is now on Democrats to confront. It will enable Democrats to raise the debt limit at a fixed dollar amount, which they will specify. Raising the debt ceiling allows the government to pay its bills for everything from Social Security to military salaries. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said inaction from Congress would have prompted the first default in American history. With Congress fighting to prevent the country from defaulting on its debts, the focus for Democrats is to get President Biden's Build Back Better bill passed very soon. Raquel Martin is back with those details. Good morning. Well, it's likely to be a heavy lift. We know for weeks, if not months now, moderates in the Senate have been cautious about backing the roughly $2 trillion plan, citing concerns over the bill's provision and its price tag. But despite that pushback, Democratic leadership remain confident. Really Senate day. Democrats are vowing to pass President Biden's Build Back Better plan by Christmas. Sticking to our deadline will be worth it. At its core, Build Back Better is the best shot we've had in decades to help families lower costs. The roughly $2 trillion deal includes money to lower the cost of prescription drugs and child care while expanding affordable housing and create good paying jobs while fighting the climate crisis. But getting the bill through the upper chamber could be easier said than done. West Virginia Democrat Senator Joe Manchin says he's concerned inflation could worsen if Congress pours more money into the economy, especially as the new Omicron variant spreads across the U.S. This is a blue state billionaire bailout. Tuesday, Senate Republicans sounded the alarm over the deal. They argue new federal child care aid will hurt middle income families. Having a family income just one dollar higher than your state's median income would result in you being ineligible for child care subsidies and impose unfair rules on church based centers. Unleash the woke mob on church daycare. And while Republicans push for less, Tuesday, California Congressman Lou Correa joined protesters outside the Capitol, demanding the Build Back Better plan build a pathway to citizenship for millions of undocumented immigrants. And there is mounting pressure for Democrats to get something done. We know Monday, President Biden called on the Senate to pass the plan as early as possible. Democrats have only a few working days left before they leave for Christmas recess. For now in Washington, Raquel Martin, back to you. Up next, we'll have a look at the week ahead on your local election headquarters. Stay with us. This is your local election headquarters. Looking ahead to the coming week, tomorrow the Senate Select Committee on State Police Oversight will hold its second meeting. This time, members of the public will get a chance to speak. Also at the Capitol on Thursday, the Senate Select Committee on Homeland Security will hear updates on the state's response to Hurricane Ida. Finally, Dr. Catherine O'Neill will speak at the Baton Rouge Press Club about COVID concerns heading into the holiday. Thank you for joining us for this week in Louisiana politics. I'm Fred Childers. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you next Sunday right here on your local election headquarters.